Welcome to r slash am I the butthole where OP's in-laws almost kill his dog at Thanksgiving. Today's episode is sponsored by Prize Picks. How well do you know your favorite sports team? Well enough that you could win some money? Prize Picks is the most fun I've had watching football. You can win up to 25 times your money. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. One of the main things I love about Prize Picks is that it's incredibly easy to use. You can submit an entry with just a few taps in less than 60 seconds. For example, you might place Aaron Rodgers for more than three passing touchdowns and Travis Kelsey for more than 50 yards, or Justin Jefferson for less than 100 yards and Lamar Jackson for more than one passing touchdown. Remember, prize picks is skill based, not luck based. The better you know your team and your players, the more money you can earn from your entries. Price Picks also spices up the fun with weekly events like Taco Tuesday or big discounts on entries. Go to prizepicks.com slash reddit and use code reddit for a first deposit match up to $100. Am I the butthole for kicking out my future in-laws after they lost and almost killed my dog? I'm engaged to my fiance, Meg. I own a large home. Meg spends most of the time at my place, but technically still has her own place. We're in the process of moving her in with me this fall. Since my place has a lot of room and Meg's doesn't, I agreed to host her family from out of town for Thanksgiving. I'm gonna be blunt, I do not like Meg's family. They're all extremely conservative, conspiracy theorist, low-key racist, a woman's place is in the kitchen types of people. Meg is very different from them, but she's still close with them. She hasn't seen them in a year, so I agreed they could stay at my place for the holiday because I can usually tolerate them enough. Wednesday morning, Meg's parents arrive and things are fine. A few hours later, Meg's sister gets here. I have a dog named Lucy. This is my dog, not Meg's dog, and not our dog. I've had her for years before Meg was around, and Meg is not a big fan of dogs, although she likes Lucy. I was in the bathroom when the sister pulled into the driveway. Meg's mom calls to me and says, I'm gonna let Lucy out front to say hi to Meg's sister, to which I explicitly said, no, don't do that. She needs to be on a leash and I should handle her. Give me a minute and I can come help, but leave her inside. I know that she heard me because she said okay. Two minutes later, Meg comes screaming, saying that her mom let Lucy outside and she ran away down the street. I ran out of my house, got in my car, and drove after her, but I couldn't find her. I drove around my neighborhood and adjacent neighborhoods trying to find her all day, but I just couldn't. She has my number on her collar, and I was terrified that she was gone or got hit by a car or something. Meg also drove around in her car looking for Lucy, but her parents and sister did nothing. They just spent the day alone at my house. I went home and slept, and then resumed the search in the morning on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. I continued searching, and I got a call in the afternoon that someone found Lucy. I went and got her, and she was a mess. She had several bite marks and was bleeding in several places. I think she got in a fight with a wild animal. I took her to the emergency room immediately, and they patched her up, and she'll luckily pull through. But that process took a long time, so I didn't get home until Thursday night. Today, I was exhausted, and basically locked myself in my room with Lucy to watch her. Meg's dad knocked on my door and told me to be a man and that the dog was back and that it was just a stupid dog, so who cares? I told them all to leave right now. Meg was upset and said they didn't have anywhere to go, and I said I don't care, but they can't be at my home. They eventually left after I threatened to call the cops. Meg left with them and texted that it was rude for offering my home and then kicking them out and that they made an honest mistake. I felt like her mom didn't listen to what I told her, and Lucy needs quiet time alone to recover, and I've never even gotten an apology. Am I the butthole? Down in the comments, someone asked OP if they ever got an apology, and OP says, No, I just got sassy remarks about how I didn't even make them a Thanksgiving dinner, so they had to find a grocery store that was open. They never apologized, other than Meg saying, I'm sorry that happened and that you got worried. You know, even if this were a simple mistake, which I doubt, let's be clear, I'm pretty sure that she heard OP and then decided to do it anyways. Even if this were a simple mistake, the correct thing to do would be for everyone to get in their cars and go look for Lucy. Man, if I did that, if I went to someone's house and their dog or their cat got out, I would definitely help search because it's my fault the dog got out. OP, you are 100% justified in getting upset. You're 100% justified in kicking them out of your house. 
Also, I'm seeing some red flag behavior out of your girlfriend. The fact that she took her family's side over your side in this situation is very troubling. So if I were you, I would be re-evaluating my relationship. OP, you get 0 out of 5 buttholes. I'm giving Meg and her family 2 out of 5 buttholes. Am I the butthole for refusing to share my inheritance with my dad and my brother after discovering a family secret? I'm a 27-year-old woman. My grandmother, as in my dad's mom, died recently. She left me my dad's portion of her inheritance and gave my brother, who's 30, nothing. For context, me and my brother have never met my granddad. According to my dad, he and his father had a very toxic relationship. After my dad and my mom met, they started dating at university and they had my brother. My parents then got married, which made my granddad stop talking to my dad. A couple of years later, my parents had me and we've been living happily ever after. After my grandfather died, my dad began to spend more time with his mom. Me and my brother also got to spend more time with her and we even spent the Christmas holidays at their house. She was this sweet old lady who loved us so much. Her energy was so electric and contagious. I'm not lying when I say that Christmas as a teenager were my most cherished times. Sadly, my grandmother passed away last year. After her funeral, me and my two aunts were called to speak to a lawyer. She died with a house worth more than 500,000 pounds and over 200,000 pounds worth of cash and other heirlooms. When we went through the inheritance, the lawyer explained that my grandma had divided it into three equal parts. Each third went to her two daughters and me because I got my dad's share of the inheritance. She left her son nothing. When my dad found out, he protested and asked how that was possible, but I wasn't too concerned. During the proceedings, my grandmother's lawyer, who was in charge of the inheritance, gave me a letter written by her a year ago. In this letter, to be read after her death, she explained that her husband, my grandfather, had disowned my dad completely. That's because my dad isn't actually the dad of my brother. He's actually a child from my mom's previous relationship. My dad met my mom when she was pregnant with my brother. My grandparents, my granddad in particular, thought this was extremely weird. He did not approve of this and was vehemently against it. My dad didn't listen and married my mom a year after my brother was born, which prompted my granddad to excommunicate him for good. During those years, my grandmother stayed in contact with my dad, but me and my brother didn't meet her until after my granddad died. The thing is, neither me nor my brother knew that my dad wasn't his biological father. A day later, my dad called me to discuss the inheritance, but I didn't want to meet him. He doesn't know that I know about his brother, and I don't know how to tell him that I know. I haven't received any money yet, but based on this, I feel like I won't share it. My family is understandably calling me greedy, but I just don't really trust them anymore. This is already causing heavy division in my family, and now I feel like dropping this news will destroy my family completely. Should I just be truthful about the reasoning, or what should I do? The comments are pretty contentious. A lot of people are saying not the butthole because OP has every legal right to keep the money and OP did nothing wrong, so why should you give away money? And then other people are saying that she is the butthole because what her dad did was selfless and this would just create strife within the family. So I'm expecting there's going to be a lot of vicious disagreements in the comments of this video, but personally, I'm on the not the butthole side. Look, everyone gets to make their own choices. If the dad wants to marry a pregnant woman, he can do so. If the grandfather wants to disinherit someone, he can do so. If the grandmother wants to give all her money to OP, she can do so. So these people who are saying that OP is the butthole, it's like they're making her responsible for the choices of other people. And that's just not fair to her. If the grandma wants to give OP all of her money for any reason, no reason, it doesn't even matter what the reason is. It's her money. So if she wants to give it to OP, she can do that. Yeah, it sucks, it's not fair, it stings, but that's how it is. The crazy thing is, this is in England, or the UK if they got pounds, I'm pretty sure it wasn't even legal for women to own property for a really long time. So if this were like, I don't know, 200, 300 years ago, then all the money would have gone to OP's father and none of it would have gone to OP's aunts. And then all of OP's dad's money would have gone to... OP's brother and none of it would have gone to OP and no one would have batted an eye. It would have been totally normal because that's just what happens with inheritance. Look, I think OP's grandparents aren't very good people. The grandfather's petty and the grandmother is also petty. But nonetheless, 
Don't petty people have a right to spend their money the way they want to spend it? Think of the biggest jerk you know. Just, he goes out and he scowls at people all day and he calls people mean names and he taunts kids by eating candy in front of them and he says, you want some candy? And then when the kid goes to get the candy, he says, ha I can't have it. And he eats the candy. Just a real jerkwad. But nonetheless, the guy goes to work, he does his job, he makes his paycheck, and he ends his life with $500,000. Can't he spend that $500,000 the way he wanted to? Didn't he earn it? Didn't he earn it from the sweat of his own brow? I guess what I'm saying is, the situation sucks, but that's just how it is. That's just how life is. Sometimes life sucks. Sometimes life is unfair. Sometimes people have to face the consequences of their choices, even if the choice that they made was a noble choice in the case of your dad. It still has consequences sometimes. And expecting OP to pay for the choices of other people, to literally pay for the choices of other people, is not fair to OP. So, I'm saying OP gets 0 out of 5 buttholes. I'm also giving OP's dad 0 out of 5 buttholes because he sounds like a decent guy and I'm not surprised he wanted to talk about inheritance. I'm giving the grandparents, let's say, 3 out of 5 buttholes for disowning their son over something unreasonable and causing all this family strife. Am I the butthole for pointing out that my mom doesn't have custody of us while sitting at the Thanksgiving table? I'm a 17 year old boy. Me and my little brother, James, who's 9, live with our older sister, Eva, who's 26. James and I were removed from our mom when I was 10, and Eva did everything so she could keep my brother and I out of the system. Hold on, at the time, if OP was 10, that means Eva was 19, okay. I think it's because Eva was worried that we'd be separated, and I know that she was in foster care for a little bit when she was younger too. So I guess that was the reason that she didn't want us to go in. She has guardianship of us now, and the adoption process is already going through. So today we were having a family dinner at a relative's house, and some people from our mom's side of the family, aunts, uncles, cousins, etc. were there with us. My aunt started making a big deal out of the fact that Eva had me and James help with some of the preparation for dinner. She ended up saying something like, You shouldn't be bossing them around. They're not your kids, and you're not their mother. Before anyone could respond, I said, Well, we haven't been your sister's kid for like seven years now, so who do you think was doing your job instead? My aunt got mad, and then eventually everyone was arguing. So, dinner was ruined. A few of my cousins even texted me afterwards and said so, and pretty much everyone ended up going home. Eva told me that it's not my responsibility to defend her. Then she said that she was sorry for the situation with our aunt. I feel bad because I made Eva feel bad and because, according to most of our family, I ruined the occasion with what I said. They think that it wasn't the place or time for me to bring up my mother's situation, even if it was just in response to what my aunt was saying. I didn't mean to ruin dinner or anything, but if I was out of line, I'll apologize. Oh, these people piss me off, man. Do you want to know when your aunt and your uncle and your grandmother and your grandfather lost the right to criticize you and Eva over your family dynamic and what you're allowed to do and not do as a family? When your mother abandoned you and they allowed a 19-year-old girl to take care of a 10-year-old and a what? A... a 2-year-old. A Yo! These people let a 19-year-old girl fight for custody of a 10-year-old and a 2-year-old and they're like... Eh, not our problem. Good luck, everyone. So sorry that your mom dipped out. I hope everything turns out okay. Oh, by the way, let me tell you what you can do with your lives. Let me tell you how to be a parent. Yo, go f*** yourself, man. No one stepped up. No aunt, no uncle, no grandfather, no grandmother said, Hey, let me adopt you. I'm sorry your mom ran out, but you're my blood relative. You're my granddaughter. You're my niece. You're my nephew. You're something. I want you to come live in my house with me because you're all children and you deserve to have a parental figure. You deserve to be protected and cared for and loved. Instead, they all just turned their back on you and left you to the hands of a 19-year-old girl? What absolute scum. What hypocrites. Pick a lane, people. Either you're not in their lives, in which case, shut the f*** up. Or you are in your lives, in which case, step up and be a parent to them. OP, you get 0 out of 5 buttholes. Honestly, I'm very proud of you for sticking up for your sister, who sounds like an amazing woman. I'm giving your aunt and everyone who took your aunt's side 3 out of 5 buttholes. If she really wanted to show her concern to the three of you, she missed her chance seven years ago. Am I the butthole for letting my 17-year-old daughter sneak out? My daughter turns 18 in a couple of months. She came to me and asked if she could have the experience of sneaking out. 
She told me <laughs> she told me who she would be with, what she'd be doing, and when. I said yes. I did not tell my husband, her stepdad. Well, when she snuck out, she didn't put her screen back in the window. When my husband noticed, he came to talk to me about it. I told him that I gave her permission to sneak out. He wants to punish her? I said no because I gave her permission. He's really upset and it looks like this is going to ruin Thanksgiving. She's a good kid, currently has all A's. He's been in her life since she was five and we sometimes butt heads about parenting styles. I just wanted to ask, am I the butthole? Yo, what is this rebel Disney princess? She wants to sneak out and be a rebel and a bad girl, but deep down she's just a goody two-shoes. It's really sweet, honestly. So, OP, I'd say you're not the butthole here. First off, you gave permission for her to sneak out, so the daughter didn't even do anything wrong. You literally let her do something and then she did it, so what's the problem? The only possible concern I could see here is that OP is keeping secrets from the husband. However, there are some secrets that are totally okay to keep from your partner. If it's like a relationship issue, then of course you should talk to your partner about it. But if your kid comes to you and only you with a secret that they want to talk to you about, then it's kind of your obligation to not tell your partner. Because otherwise you're just betraying your kid's trust and it's your kid's secret, not your partner's secret, so you should keep the secret. So I can kind of understand why he's upset, but saying that he wants to punish her for something that she got permission for is just stupid. So OP, I'm giving your daughter 0 out of 5 buttholes, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes, and I'm giving your husband I think 0 0.5 out of 5 buttholes because I think his heart's in the right place because he seems to be concerned about her. However, punishing her when she has permission is just idiotic. Am I the butthole for beating my parents to the chase and moving out in the middle of the night? I'm an 18 year old girl and I overheard a conversation with my mom and my dad about how they planned to kick me out shortly after my 18th birthday. The way they were talking about it seemed like they were dead serious and the way that it was brought up multiple times made it seem like they were going to kick me out too. So I decided that I wouldn't give them the chance to kick me out, and I made plans with my friend, Riley, a 17-year-old girl, to stay at her place until I graduated, and then move into a college dorm or have an apartment of my own. Riley's parents were horrified by the thought that my parents would kick me out the second I turned 18, and agreed to let me stay at their place as long as I graduated high school. Riley, her parents, and my boyfriend Cole came after midnight to help me take my belongings to their car and drive me to Riley's house. My parents woke up in the middle of this and asked me what the hell was going on. I kind of shrugged and told them that I was moving out before they could kick me out. My parents tried to deny this and attempted to stop me from leaving, but there was nothing they could do since I'm a legal adult. By the way, I wasn't gonna just leave in the middle of the night without a goodbye. I already put a note on the kitchen table where my mom goes first thing in the morning to explain what happened. Right now, I'm at Riley's house in their spare bedroom, and I've gotten bombarded with calls from my parents asking me to come back and to not tell my grandparents about this. In one text, my mom called me an ungrateful B-word for leaving in the middle of the night, and that she should have kicked me out sooner. <laughs> alright. Well, OP, sounds like your parents are just handing you all the proof you need. I would just screenshot this conversation and forward it to your grandparents. My assumption is that the reason why they're so concerned about your grandparents finding out is because they don't want to get cut out of the inheritance. OP, I don't know what your relationship is like with your grandparents, but I think that you should reach out to them because clearly your parents are liars and if they get to your grandparents first, they'll poison the well. OP, you get 0 out of 5 buttholes. Your awful parents get 3 out of 5 buttholes. Also, big shout out to Lori and Lori's parents. What a bro, or a sister in this case, I suppose. That was our slash am I the butthole. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.